Hey, what's going on guys? I wanted to take some time to show you my coding setup for coding and developing smart contracts. This is gonna show you a little bit more about environment variables, about MetaMask stuff, about VS Code, different setups, and basically kind of what I do to get into the groove here. Now I code mainly on a Mac or a Linux, so I actually am not super familiar with Windows stuff, but uh, the majority of this does follow for Windows as well. It just might be a little bit different. And I have some links in the description to actually help you out uh, with following along if you're on Windows. So the first thing that I wanna show you guys is you know sh installing Visual Studio Code or some type of code editor. There are a whole bunch out there. Uh, I use VS Code because I don't know, I'm used to it and I like it. <laughs> uh, I like it at least for the terminal that it has. It has some really nice debugging tools. Uh, it has some GitHub integrations that are cool and a lot of extensions, but um, yeah, I really like it. So first thing to note is I love having the terminal and the code editor in the same spot. Um, it has this really cool functionality where if you just type code, um, VS Code will actually open up uh, in the directory that you're at, um, which is really cool. You do have to enable that functionality, um, but I, I really like that at least. So getting set up in here. Then I usually will start uh, a project with a brownie bake, you know, or maybe a truffle in box or just a git clone from, from Hardhat. Uh, I'm going to show you a, a brownie bake chain link mix just because I've worked on this a lot and I really like it. Uh, but once you do that, you know, all your contracts and stuff will show up on the left here. Next thing uh, is environment variables. So I have an Etherscan token, a private key, Web3 and Fura project ID that I actually just use for all my projects. Um, I don't ever leave any of my sensitive or any of my private keys that actually have money in them uh, in my developing environment because I don't want to accidentally make some stupid transaction where I send all my money away. So I, I never actually put my important stuff in a .emb um, or, as a, or, or really anywhere. But what I do do a lot is in my um, dot bash profile. So in your home directory, you have a dot bash profile. I'm not gonna go into it right now, but what you can do in there is you can actually have um, a whole bunch of exports um, that'll automatically get loaded from the start. So you can see too, that when I start my, um, my shell here, I get this little quote saying, make today an amazing day, right? So I have a, I have a command in there that says echo, make, uh, make, you know, make, make today an amazing day. Um, and it runs this dot bash profile whenever your terminal starts off. So I highly recommend, you know, adding some, some environment variables in there that, that you're going to use a lot. Uh, some of those are going to be your web theory Infura project ID which again, you can head over to Infura, you know, sign in, log in, and, and get a free key. Um, I also have a lot of um, like export RPC URL equals uh, www.infura.io slash blah, blah, blah. I have like export coven RPC URL, you know, export mainnet RPC URL. That way I know if I have, if I'm using an environment variable like that, uh, I know if it's mainnet, I know if it's coven, I know, you know, I know if it's whatever. And I, I find that really valuable to have those in my bash profile as well. I also have an etherscan token. If you go to etherscan, you can get an API key. Uh, and this is really good for, uh, for publishing uh, and verifying contracts on your uh, on Etherscan. So you can get your own free API key here from, uh, from Etherscan. Then you can do export Etherscan token equals, you know, whatever. And uh, Brownie, Truffle, Hardhead, they all have nice plugins for automatically verifying contracts on Etherscan. Uh, and so it's really just good to have this environment variable out here. Uh, my private key. So I do have a, a wallet that I use for pretty much all my testing. You know, it doesn't have any money on it on mainnet. Uh, it's got total zero dollars. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that if I accidentally do a demo and actually push up, you know, my private key, I, I don't care. <laughs> worst, worst case scenario is I got to get a new testnet wallet, which has, I don't know, 22 free ETH, Coven ETH, um, that I can just get from anywhere. Um, but again, 
you can get the private key by coming to your MetaMask. Account details, export private key, you know, typing in your password. And the only difference is you do have to do, you know, you do have to add OX to the start of your private key. So you have to add OX to the start and, and you're good to go. But if you want to, you can absolutely just put them all like in a .env file, like I'm kind of showing you guys here. Whoops. Uh, but again, I like to just do it in my, um, whoops. I like to just do a lot of it in my .bash profile because a lot of these are going to be the same across all projects. So, um, so that's something that I do that's really helpful. Because the other thing that you'd have to do, you know, you'd have to do like export, you know, etherscan, token equals, you know, whatever your token is every single time, and that super sucks. So the other thing that I'll, I'll often have is I'll have a, um, the other thing that I'll do sometimes is I'll have like a local Ganache instance running, or a local Chainlink node running, or a local Hardhead node running. Those really depend more project to project, but whenever I'm building one of these projects, I do usually like to do like a Ganache CLI. Um, that way I can just kind of connect to it in my, in, in my development environment uh, and run some stuff and test some stuff because it's going to be way faster than testing just on a, uh, on a COVID testnet. So for those of you who you know, do a lot of testing on a testnet, um, I would definitely highly recommend doing more locally first. Uh, I know, especially with working with oracles, you do have to do a little bit more mocking, but uh, we do have a video out that kind of shows you how to do some of this mocking, which is really good. And other than that, those are really the main pieces of my setup. I mean, I, I check out Etherscan a lot. Sometimes I use subgraphs. Uh, there's a whole lot of tools out there. If you guys want to see a different tool, you know, let me know. Hit me up. Happy to get happy to show everybody and uh, talk to you soon. Hope this was helpful. See you guys.